Good evening, everyone. Today is September the 8th, 2021, and the Board of Appeals meeting is now in session. Um, I'd like to call this meeting to order and uh, thank everyone for attending uh, in advance. The first item on our agenda is the approval of the minutes. And, and uh, we have two sets of minutes to approve, uh, but we can do it in one motion, I believe. So if we can go ahead and may I have a, a motion to approve the minutes? I'll go ahead and make that motion and move that we approve the minutes of the last two Board of Appeals meetings on Wednesday, July 14th. And I don't have the other one in front of me, but I think it was Wednesday, August 11th of uh, 2021. Yeah, that's right. I second. Okay, are there any um, comments on the minutes? So I have uh, two uh, typos that I just like to uh, point out. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> on packet page five, uh, there was just a slight typo there. And if I could just go ahead and bring that up here. So it's on, it's uh, under public hearings and I guess it would be the third paragraph down the single sentence and it, it should read, there was, there was no testimony from the public as opposed to not. Okay, that's just one, Caroline. Okay, and, I got it. You got it. Okay, and the second page, I'm not sure if this is a typo or not, but on packet page six, and it's the paragraph that starts out with, in response to the questions from the board, the engineer and the name is Camille Shab Shab. Is, that's, his name. It, that, that's the name. Shop shop. Yeah, that's, that's, that's not it. a typo. Nope. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to verify. Yep. Okay. So um, any other uh, comments on the minutes? Okay. Uh, hearing none, I'll go ahead and call for the vote. And I have to do by roll call because we're in a Zoom meeting. So um, Aaron, how do you vote? Aye. Robert? Aye. Emil? Aye. Gary, I, and myself, I, so that uh, the minutes are uh, approved and on a vote of five zero. All right, so uh, today or this evening, we have a special exception hearing um, regarding amendments. And let me go ahead and just, and, and just uh, state what we're gonna be working on this evening. It's DOA 9017-2021. It's Asbury Atlantic Housing for the Elderly at the southeast side of Russell Avenue between the intersection of Odin Howell and Maryland Avenues in the R90 medium density residential zone. And this is an amendment to the special exception. And at this time, Caroline, uh, would you please uh, introduce the case to the board? Sure. Uh, this is a public meeting on Board of Appeals case BOA 9017-2021. It amends special exception 4A418D. Given the minor nature of the proposed amendment, no public hearing is required for this amendment to special exception. The petition requests an amendment to special exception A418D by Asbury Methodist Homes for housing for the elderly at the southeast side of Russell Avenue between Odin Hall and Maryland Avenues. Property is located in the R90 medium density residential zone and the use is allowed by section 24-294 of the city of Gaithersburg zoning ordinance. The applicant is requesting an amendment to special exception A418D to reduce the site plan land area by 0.71 acres and to reduce the number of housing units from 76 to 73 for housing for the elderly. And if we can put up packet page nine, this is the aerial view of the special except the current special exception. This is the outline as it currently exists uh, on the southwest side of Russell Avenue. All the area in blue is uh, commonly referred to as the uh, Asbury Villas. And here to present the case is uh, Sean Hughes from Miller Miller and Canby. I will uh, turn it over to him. Okay, thank you, Caroline. And I, I guess before we uh, get, get started, I know that uh, if you're already an attorney, you don't need to be sworn in, but uh, Sean, will there be anybody else speaking uh, this evening? And if so, I'd like to swear them in. Thank you, Ms. Chairman. Um, 
We do have um, two persons here with me. Um, I'm going to try to, as Greg mentioned, I'm going to try to do most of the speaking, but they're here to answer any questions. Okay. Um, yes, we have. Let, um, me, let me just go ahead and swear them in then. Uh, so, it's Mike uh, Reynolds. I apologize. Mike Reynolds and Jeff Sanero. Okay, great. So um, I would just ask you, do you solemnly swear and affirm under the penalties of perjury that the testimony you are about to give in this matter shall be the truth and nothing but the truth? Jeff Sanero, yes. Yes. Okay. All right. And uh, Sean, I, I, uh, you're, you're the attorney. And was there anybody else that will be speaking this evening? Yeah, it looks like, uh, at least on my screen, oh, there's Mike. Mike was muted, but I think, go ahead, oh, Mike. Mike. Okay, Mike, I think I heard that yeah. also. I do, I do. Okay, you do. Okay, all right. Okay, thank you very I much. Getting... We see you as a phone number. Sorry, I just keep getting... Okay, all right, thank you. All right, well, I'll ask you, uh, Sean, to please proceed then. Okay, thank you very much. Um, yes, Sean Hughes um, from Miller, Miller and Canby. And I'm here with Mike Reynolds, who, who represents Asbury, and Jeff Sanero, who's from CNS, the civil engineer. So we, we do appreciate the opportunity tonight. I am going to be brief, um, our attempt to be, and then we would welcome questions. So first, I do want to thank uh, city staff. They've been really um, helpful and considerate with their time as usual, especially want to thank Ms. Seiden and Mr. Mann. Um, the staff report that Ms. Seiden did is, um, it's, it's very good. It's, it does a you know, stellar job analyzing the code and summarizing the application, um, which as she noted is a request to modify the existing Asbury special exception in that area she showed and, and it's before you right now. Um, and that starts on page 12 of, of the packet. Essentially it's going, what, what's being requested is, is, is a minor reduction from the 15.97 acres um, reducing it down by 0.71 acres, uh, just not to just taking away 0.71, which is taking it from 76 to 73 um, uh, housing units for the elderly. And um, also on page 13 and the next page of the staff report, it also shows that that's pretty much the same aerial plan, I believe. Um, so as I said, uh, I think the staff's done a really nice job. We, we certainly concur. I agree with their analysis and their report. We, uh, we appreciate and we certainly support their recommendation of approval. We thus would ask uh, respectfully that the board would support staff's recommendation and we ask that you would hopefully vote for approval of this request. Um, with that, uh, we, we appreciate the time. We welcome any questions. Can we just put up packet page 10, which shows the site plan that the board would actually be Approving, there we go. All right, well, let, let's open it up for questions from the board. So I'll kick it off with, <laughs> could, you, could you indicate uh, the parcel on the map here that will be uh, taken away from the special exception? Is that for me to show, Caroline? I, I think, Sean, if, yes. Yes, Sean, if you could do that and just yes. help the board see where the reduction of land is taking yeah. I it's don't over, know it's, Yeah, it's over here on the east side, these three, there's three lots, and they've, they've, been, uh, they've been kind of standalone lots, and they've been, um, uh, they've had the houses over there, they, as, as was in the, indicated in the application, they, they kind of haven't exactly fit in with the overall plan um community there on that side so it's on this right side here and it would be these three lots okay so it's the it's the far right there yep i think i can see three on the far right there's three, the, three, three this is outside of the yellow outside of the yellow area that they're this, being taken out of the special exception yeah is that you jeff i'm sorry go ahead jeff i, I apologize i'm trying to interject myself I, i'm not being rude um sure. the the from what caroline said the 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 from the yellow line to the right of that of the picture you're looking that's the the three lots that, that are being removed from asbury um it from a real life standpoint if you actually go out there on maryland avenue you'll notice the fact the architecture is totally different those were the old brick houses the old um not old but 
but the back in the day houses compared to what the villas were built as is kind of a unit type of Asbury community type house. They were a part of the property, but they were not part of the original development of the villas per se. Perfect, perfect picture. That, that that's exactly yeah. It, yeah. And okay. and and to that end, if I if I could just ask a follow up question, which is uh, the the aesthetics of it seem seem obvious even just from the overhead you could tell the difference looking at the roofs uh, the the difference between the the 73 and the and the other three um but there's a um there's a couple of like just references to you know the separated units have not contributed as much to the purpose intended for the villa residences and i imagine there's some obviousness there with there's a community with these houses that all look the same and then there's these others that are don't look the same and they're a little bit off to the side is there more to the story when when we you know just what we mean by have not contributed as much to the purpose intended for the residences um, this is Sean. I'll, I'll just say a little bit, and then Mike may want to add on or Jeff. I mean, part of it is it's also, as you can see, it's kind of off to the side. It's not mm -hmm. as easy to gain access to the community and some of the community uh, facilities. Um, that's one of the been one of the bigger issues also over time. Sure. Mike, did you want to add anything or Jeff? They, they're either on mute or I guess they're satisfied. <laughs> Mike, Mike's still on mute. Well, well, Mike's coming on, but I, I, I would you, say. I, yeah, go ahead, Mike. Yeah. Yep. Lot 24, lot 24, which is the inside lot, has been vacant for years. Mm. And uh, lot 30 on the end is a guest house for the residents' friends, which rarely gets used. So they're just really underperformed properties. The one in the middle is uh, we have a resident living there, and she's been there quite a while. So that won't change in the near future. It's really the two end units. Got it. I, th I think I think a part of it that that, that Mike has relayed relayed to me too, and and I and I apologize for the fact that that um, of him not being able to. But but the but the outside units, the the twenty four and thirty that you see there, they they um um have not been really even though they've been used by the community have not been a part of the community and it doesn't it doesn't necessarily run well and they don't have been able to rent them as 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 it being a part of the community and in reality um at the end of the day when if if they can be put to the community and and someone live there and taken care of a little bit better then it's it's probably a better situation understood thank you Neil. Uh, yes, Carol, thank you. So I uh, noticed on uh, package page 21 that the current uh, special exception has been modified four times. And so I, I wanted to just ask and clarify uh, this current amendment. Uh, is, it, is it similar to any of the previous four uh, modifications in, in terms of what we're trying to accomplish here, uh, specifically uh, for example, Special Amendment A-418A uh, A from April 8th of 1993 that reduced the, um, uh, the number of dwellings from 79 to 76. Um, that's a good question. I'm not sure if I know, I don't know that answer. Is that, Mike, do you know the history of that one? I honestly, I apologize. I don't know the answer to that. I do know that this one obviously I'm guessing a little bit, but this is, from our perspective, a, um, a fairly minor change. And I, I don't know if those were more significant, but um, is that his, from a historical perspective, Jeff or, or Mike, do either of you know that answer? I think Mike's trying to get on. I, I can tell you from my perspective, I, I mean, I've been doing stuff with Asbury for about uh, been the civil engineer for Asbury for about 35, 35 years or something similar to that. And that's 28 years ago. Um, that's about the time frame, if I'm not mistaken, the bills were built. So, um, and, and Mike may have barely been a part of the process at that point. Let him Actually, I've been, with, I've been with Asbury 28 years. And I built the villas, phases one and two. So that amendment to the special exception occurred before we started construction. And I think it had to do with the, we site planted 76 instead of 79 for some reason, but it was before my time. It was 93. Because I joined the organization in 94. 
You know that that's that's a great question, and 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 to to add on to what Mike's saying, that actually, and and I know I'm under oath, but that actually does sound familiar. Um, in my 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 vague little memory, uh, that that there were originally some additional uh villas uh proposed at that time and it was reduced so i don't know if that has something to do with it but it possible it could be possible well and this is sean i mean i do i do know that they were uh i guess those the, those opinions reference are attached in our packet later pages um sort <clears throat> Uh, sure. So, uh, I mean, without belaboring the point, and thank you for for that background, um, I I think that the staff report's analysis is pretty thorough. I, I just wanted to uh, make sure that any of the previous historical uh, special exceptions, uh, uh, whether those considerations are, are are consistent with with what we're deliberating here tonight. Okay, thank you, Emil. Sure, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Okay, so we, um, and, uh, thank, and uh, thank you, Caroline, for putting the previous um, amendments in our package too. That was helpful to see uh, the history. Um, I have another question, but I, I don't wanna, I don't wanna take over. Somebody else has a burning question. Um, if we could put the, the diagram back up again, the one that was just up, I don't know, is that, Maybe maybe we put up the aerial the the one. Let's see. That would be packet page. Let's see. The one we just had up there. The page, page 10, ten. Is that what you're looking for? Could be. Yeah. <laughs> site that's the site plan. The site plan, yeah. Page 10. Page 10. Okay, so um so I wanted to know, I guess, just the question that just struck me. Uh, I haven't driven past Asbury in a while, um, but is this, is this a gated community that we're looking at for the villa, including the, the three uh, lots that's in question in tonight? Is that completely gated with limited access? Yes, the, 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 the great question, the, the, the overall main, what we call the main campus, which is across the street from Russell Avenue, is completely gated. And then also what we can, what I, I have always called the Villas One, which is the site you're looking at now that we're subdividing, um, is gated as well. Two separate gates, but, but yes, they're completely gated. And, and good point, too, because those three lots are not part of that gate, gated community. Um, they're completely separate for, with, within that, that uh, enclosure. Okay, yeah, that was, thank you very much. That was more of a curiosity, but um, great. Okay, um, it up to additional questions from the board. I, I think Aaron, you had already asked, correct? I, I didn't, yeah, there we go. So um, Robert, any questions? No, I've just always said that the Asbury has been a you know, pillar of the community and we're glad to have him there. Thank you. Thank you, Gary? Yeah, I go Robert's statements. I think, uh, you know, I've grew up around here and I've known uh, several people as well as family members. Matter of fact, my uh, mother in law is currently there now in the Wilson Center. So they do a great service to the community and thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, is there any uh, last call for questions? If not, um, we're going to go ahead and uh, are there, is there any additional testimony from any other parties at the um, meeting here this evening? Um, none from the applicant unless there's anyone else on the line and uh, we needed to respond to it, but we appreciate the time. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so Greg, is this the time when you'd run the video if there was anybody? It would be, but I don't believe there's anybody else on. So I okay. think just making note of that would be um, sufficient. Okay, all right, thank you. All right, so can we have a motion uh, from the board to close the record? I'll go ahead and move to we close the record. I'll need a second. Second. 
All right, so I'm going to do the roll call vote for uh, to closing the record. Aaron, how do you vote? Aye. Robert? Aye. Emil? Aye. Gary? Aye. And myself, Carol? Aye. The motion passes to close the record 5 0. Okay. Thank you, thank you very in. much. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So now, the, with this, it, was there somebody that wanted to say something? Sorry. Thanks to the board for the time. That's all. Oh, you're welcome. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. So uh, on the agenda here, we've closed the record. So now we're just going to move into any further board discussion amongst ourselves and a review of the draft, draft resolution. So uh, is there any additional comments from the board? All right. I don't hear it. You know, I think the comments that we heard that this is um, this is really a um, a good a, a good analysis of property that's being used and not being used. And I guess in reading the resolution ahead of time, that once the all three properties are no longer being used, uh, the land will be returned back to the community itself. So. So I'll need someone to make a motion for the resolution. And the resolution is on packet page uh, six, is that 67 or 87? On eight, I think. The resolution. Chair, Chair Rigg, can I just suggest, rather than read the resolution, anybody that would like to make a motion uh, to approve the resolution can use the language in the staff recommendation on page packet page 12 as the basis for the motion. Thank you very much, Carolyn. That's, that's all the language we need. That's all the language we need. Okay. <laughs> for those that have their packets in front of them. I got my glasses on, Carol, if you need me to read this. <laughs> well, we, uh, well, I need I need a board member to make a motion. So, Gary, the ball's in your court. Um, it's on packet page 12, as recommended by Caroline. So I, I make a motion that the Board of, of Appeals, based on the exhibit submitted, the applicant's testimony and the staff report findings and recommendations, grant special exception BOA-9017-2021, finding it complete with 24-189 and 24-191 of the city code. Thank you, Gary. And can I get a second? I'll second. Okay, thank you. Uh, I think it was Robert, I'm not sure. Um, okay, so uh, any further discussion on this resolution? All right, then I'll go ahead and call for the vote. Aaron, how do you vote? Aye. Robert? Aye. Emil? Aye. Gary? Aye. And myself, aye. So the resolution passes on a vote of 5-0. And we are now completed with that item on the agenda. So uh, moving along, uh, is there anything from the staff, Caroline? No, just the next meeting is scheduled for Wednesday, October 13th. Uh, we may have a month off i'm not entirely sure yet uh, but right at the moment we don't have any uh current applications so we shall see but we've been very busy so uh that's good that's all i have okay thanks caroline and frank any any thoughts uh, this evening uh no i think that on a lot of your minds may be will we be in person starting october 1st because that had been and still is the, the plan in place, but that is being, uh, I can tell you a lot of fall plans are being very carefully evaluated and we will wait to hear more as far as um, what the decision is. But I do know a lot of places were, were planning to reopen and uh, many events were planning to be in person during the fall that are now beginning to change uh, back to virtual. So I can't say what the final decision will be. It will partly depend on what health news we hear um, as far as the um, COVID infections and uh, uh, health department information that we hear over the next uh, probably several days. 
All right, thank you very much. Gary, was there something you wanted to say? Nope, it's just your light flash. Okay, all right. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else from anyone else uh, on the, on the uh, Zoom meeting this evening? I do have a quick question for oh, the Sure, go ahead, Gary. Uh, at the renovation that, I forget the name of the building across from City Hall, but is that where the, is City Hall moving there? Are the council chambers moving there? And if so, how far along is that project? Uh, well, the initial, uh, I can just say generally, uh, we're, we don't have a firm expectation as to when it will be reopened because once it's completed, it's still going to take some time to get everything set up, make sure everything's working. Um, the initial completion date, it would have been open by now. Um, there has been some delay. There was some delay in getting the water hooked up. There was some delay in getting electricity, which really held everything up altogether. There have been some other delays that, you know, if you've ever been part of a large construction project, cost overruns and delays to some extent go with the territory. And we've had some of that. Um, we are now looking at we're hoping for expected completion this year, uh, reopen it, that building being available and used uh, could very well be in the spring, but that's going to depend somewhat on, they're going to want to make sure that everything works. There, there was a plan, there is a plan to have the council meetings there. Um, I believe the discussion so far has been that uh, board meetings and planning commission and and all of that will also be held there. Um, but they will right now um, keep the existing council chambers available. So, you know, we'll have a place, the board will have a place to go uh, in the meantime, pending that it could be that as they try to get the new building up and running, there could be some delays. So uh, that may be also so something you'll have to watch and see, but Right now, I'd be looking towards the spring of next year. Great, thank you. Well, um, I want to thank everyone for uh, uh, attending and joining us, and participating in the meeting this evening. And uh, we look forward to seeing you very soon, uh, perhaps next month. This meeting is now adjourned. <laughs>